A summation that's become a YouTube sensation. Who says Fox Business doesn't carry clout? Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. And just call it the beef that went viral. Because my closing comments last night on Ron Paul and just letting voters decide whether he's a serious candidate got some very serious reaction. Thousands of hits. And apparently they just keep on coming and coming. And all because I refuse to continue this media piling on a candidate the mainstream media. And many of my own colleagues here at Fox say can't win. And well, that may be so. But as I said last night and mentioned with my colleague and friend Chris Wallace last week in Iowa, I'm the guy on the left, that is not up to us to decide. That is up to Iowans to decide. The final straw for me, when Iowa's governor had the goals to say if Ron Paul wins his state, focus on who comes in second. Again, trivializing not only Ron Paul, but any candidate, I guess by extension, the enlightened media or power brokers decide is not an acceptable candidate. Well, it certainly hit a chord. Robert May emails, thank you for not being an idiot. Sounds like one my mother-in-law could have written. Anyway, uh, Shannon Fitzpatrick emails, thanking you for defending Dr. Paul against the ridiculously biased attacks made by such pundits as Bill O'Reilly, Rachel Maddow, Chris Wallace, and Brian Williams. Some of those folks are very good, by the way, but as she continues, I haven't seen something like this in a very long time. Jeff via Yahoo, you have rhymes with walls of steel. I am a veteran and I salute you. Jeff emails, you're one of the few non-asses in the mainstream media landscape. You have consistently been fair and unbiased, and you have consistently delivered, including at the recent Fox News debate in Iowa. Virginia emails, while everyone everywhere is perfecting their smear campaign against Ron Paul and now preparing to discredit the Iowa caucus, it was just wonderful to see you call these people out on the nonsense. Justin emails, bravo, Neil, thank you so much for standing up and saying what needed to be said about the media's unethical treatment of who is electable and their automatic discrediting of Ron Paul. Ross Rolowski of Pennsylvania, I applaud your willingness to let the man speak his mind, even though you may not agree with him in total. Jordy Hutmels, you may not be a Ron Paul supporter, but you showed fair treatment and respect for him. For that, I would like to thank you immensely. We don't expect pundits and news presenters to support Dr. Paul. All we are looking for is fair treatment, and you have done so. Jim Brown emails, thanks, Neil. Paul's not perfect, but who is? He should at least be given a fair shake. That really sums it up. Of the thousands of emails we got on this subject, that was, it is my point. Ron Paul should be given a fair shake, a fair hearing. And if he wins Iowa, a fair pat on the back, not a swift dismissive kick in the ass. It is not up to the establishment politicians or knucklehead anchors like me to decide who's a credible candidate or not, even though I think, truth be told, I'm a pretty good judge. Anyway, as I said last night in this very show, our track record isn't really good if you think about it. But weren't these the same experts who were the ones saying Jimmy Carter's own upstart 1976 win in Iowa was a fluke, but it wasn't. Well, Ronald Reagan could never, ever, ever be elected president. But he was. Now, I'm not smart enough to figure how things will go this time, but I am smart enough to know how candidates constantly dismissed by their party pros respond almost every time. They leave. They just bolt. John Anderson in 1980. George Wallace in 1968. Teddy Roosevelt in 1912. Each dismissed by a party that refused to hear their message, then compounding its ills by ripping the messenger. Now, I don't know what Congressman Paul does next, where he maybe wins next, where he goes next. I do know Republicans keep this dismissive attitude going. It wouldn't surprise me one bit if Ron Paul does this next. Just leave the party. Because for him, it hasn't been a party.